the end of the fourth turn, and the Germans have really made a powerful surge. Large infantry formations have arrived, and the spearheads have broken through, getting all the way to the outskirts of Smolensk there, but also from the north. So essentially it's pocketed both towns here plus some other forces. Now the Soviets aren't doing too badly because they are starting their second line of defense here. Their reinforcing armies are showing up. So they can probably get here, even Smolensk, and then the heavy woods area to the north. So if they can get those into position, they should be able to uh, hold their next line of defense. Starting in the north around Vidips, the Germans had to overcome their own stupid mistake. They did not position their, logis their logistics uh, very accurately, and a dumb off by one error meant that they could not get across the bridge here even though they had created an opening. So the first thing they had to do was to waste fuel supply to move forces back to the bridgehead so they could remain in supply and then rejigger their trucks and wagons in order to make a supply connection all the way back to the west edge there. That cost them a full turn but once they got that sorted out they were able to surge across this river and blast through, circle V-dips, and get some uh, spearheads all the way down to the road to Smolensk. Additionally, the arrival of another corps from the north edge here, including two motorized divisions, enabled the Germans to break through, cross yet again, and throw some uh, good spearheads cutting off and po pocketing these forces right there. Now from the Soviet perspective on the plus side, while they are pocketed, they can potentially break out and recover some of these units, but around V-tips they're probably stuck. But on the plus side they have a headquarters, they have a lot of supply cache, so they'll probably be able to eat off of the supply caches for two turns and then probably three more turns off of the uh, on-map supply they have there in the hex. So that means the Germans are definitely going to have to wear down these uh, this pocket and capture it by force rather than just starving them out. So that'll be a win for the Soviets. That'll, that'll give them a few more turns of breathing room before the Germans can really establish their logistics to go for the next uh, objective. In the center around Orsha the Germans have definitely cut them off completely from all supply uh, paths. But it's a very large force. They should be able to use supply cash, they have a headquarters, plus a very large stack of onboard supply to survive for a number of turns in these defensive positions. That's again going to force the Germans to fight their way through and eject them forcibly from that position. Now the German spearheads have reach all the way here, cutting the road and the rail in several points, so that's likely never going to be counterattacked and reopened. But this pocket can probably hold and be a real thorn in the side of the German advance for quite some time. Now that they're cut off, the Soviets probably are best served to try to hunker down and just wait out the, uh, the Germans. But before that, they were actually making pretty good use of some local counterattacks. Now they weren't inflicting a lot of casualties, but they were disorganizing some of the Germans, and more importantly, they were forcing the Germans to use supply in defense rather than in movement or attack. And the Germans have very short supply. The Soviets are fairly fairly heavy with it, so that was a good tactic for a couple of turns to just sort of soak off the German supply if not actually inflicting any casualties. But now that they're pocketed, they don't want to lose too many men too quickly because they can't get them back. And they don't want to use up that supply because it's better to be a hindrance to the German advance. Give the guys in the back some time to form up those new defense lines. In the south, the Germans finally punched across in three places. Here, this uh, track across the river. They finally captured the town of Mogilev, and that's a 
perhaps well secondary road, but at least a more traversable, easily traversable roadway, and then their engineering bridge right there. So once they open that up, they have clear avenues of advance, plenty of avenues for supply, and additionally, the railroad unit has, a, has arrived and is starting to convert this uh, gauge. So once they get the railroad to here, they should have much better avenues for trace supply. But that's very slow going. Two more turns before they'll get to convert through Mogilev. Now the one thing for the Germans that isn't so great is that while they've opened up this whole area, they've pocketed some forces. They are going to run up against this river right there. I don't know how to pronounce that. But that river line is going to be a real good defensive position and not easy to cross. There are only a couple of points. They only have one more engineering bridge they can use. So they're kind of naturally being forced to the north once they reach this barrier up towards Smolensk there. So they got their spearheads all the way up to the edge of the city. With that river, they're going to be hard-pressed to try to find a good crossing point. There's really only one and two places right there, both of them in very swampy ground, not easy to punch through. So the Soviets will be looking to block those areas, plus anything where they might be able to get a bridge across. The Soviets are receiving some reinforcements here, basically three new armies. and They're kind of slowly moving their way up to these positions right along here and behind the river line. And they will likely be able to break out some of these pocketed forces here and here, possibly here, to break out as a game term. It kind of means when you're surrounded, you're cut out of trace supply, but you kind of have an avenue back to um, your lines. You can roll a special die roll, and those forces can, if they pass it, show up as reinforcements, you know, one or two or, you know, so many turns in the future. Otherwise, the Soviets will just have to march these forces up, get into position, and hopefully hold, hold out long enough to uh, see the German motorized units start to evaporate, which will begin in August. So we're probably looking at about four more turns of the Germans in you know, peak power to really make their dash for the victory. So that's how long the Soviets need to hold out before they really have a good chance of holding on and possibly even counterattacking. Now one thing to look for in this upcoming turn, um, OCS is divided, each turn is divided into player turns, and there's a concept of initiative where the player that rolls successfully for initiative can choose whether or not to move first or second in a turn. That often leads to the um, the vaunted double turn, where you move second in one turn, the next turn you win initiative, so you move first, and you get two moves before your opponent has a chance. Sometimes that can yield you know, really big results, overwhelming results. But that's not always the case. For instance, in the last turn, the Germans moved second. They made these big, big gains, deep spearheads. But at the same time, they put themselves at risk. If they don't win initiative, they are in perhaps a bit of trouble because they're out of supply in a, numer a number of places and will be hard-pressed to get back into supply without making some uh, very desperate suicide types of attacks to open up supply lanes. So that could be a scheme for the Russians to take advantage of. They win initiative, they could very well force the Germans to go first, give them a double turn, and yet the Russians wouldn't really suffer too much from it because there's not too much more in the way of gains the Germans can make at this point. But it could put the Germans in a very precarious supply position. That's a case where the initiative mechanism and the double turn is actually going to potentially work against somebody, not for them.